Hi, I want to talk about the page builder templates today. Now, um, we talked about building our page from the scratch. We then talked about using blocks and pre-made blocks uh, to speed up that process. But there's one level above the blocks uh, that we can also utilize, and those are page templates. Page templates allow you to create a new page of a pre-made template. Meaning that when you get into the page editor, you already have several elements on the screen that you can interact with. The other um, benefit of using page templates is that you can ensure that certain pages follow a certain um, design, right? So that it has that certain pages, let's say in the product landing pages group that you create um, always have a hero section that looks in one way and always have let's say two paragraphs of text and then they have a call to action at the end right so you give the user a pre-made template uh, that they can populate and uh, today we're going to go through an exercise of creating a page template learning about some of the mechanics of how page templates work and show you how do you then create a page of a page template. All right. Now I'm in the uh, Webmedy administrative dashboard and under page builder templates. This is where I'm currently placed and uh, I'm going to start off by creating a new template. We're going to give the template a name. Uh, let's call it product landing page. Give it a slug and a description. All right, let's press the create button. What this is going to do is it's going to place us inside the editor. And it's a similar editor to the one we have for blocks. So the settings are limited and there's not, not all the options are available, right? But um, beside that, everything else is more or less the same. And uh, here we want to start off by creating our template. The cool thing is that we can use the basic elements and the well, any type of element we have here to build the template, but we can also use the pre-made blocks. Now, in this example, I'm going to use uh, pre-made blocks just to speed up the process. So let's click on the plus and I already have a few blocks here that I want to use to build a template. So I'm going to start off by adding a hero block to the very top and I want my template to uh, require the user to have two paragraphs of text with an image. So one is going to be with an image on the left and the other one is going to be with an image on the right. And at the very bottom, I want to have a call to action footer, right? So here I've got those blocks and you can see they are pre-made blocks because they have a name when I click on them. And um, beside the blocks, right, I can always add an empty block and in that block I can also place basic elements right now similarly to the blocks um, I can link an element so let's move this here let's call it demo adding right so here this block has this heading which is linked to a variable, right? But also because I've used pre-made blocks to create the template, you can see that like those blocks, when we insert them into a page, they will have their variables exposed and the user will be able to populate them, right? And again, because these, these are pre-made blocks, regardless if I insert them into a page template or an actual page, I can't edit them uh, unless I unlink them. But I don't want to do that. I want to actually build an inheritance tree here where I have a page template made of pre-made blocks. This way, 
when I use that template to create a page, I have this tree page is inheriting a page template, which is made of pre-made blocks. And if I then change any of the blocks inside the block editor, that change will not only propagate to the page, but it will also propagate to the page template itself, right? All right, so here we have a template we want, let's say, our content editors to follow and always use when they are creating a new page. So it gives it a complete structure. Um, there's a few more options here available under the settings. Uh, so we have the title and the slug in the description that we set earlier, but we also have a few more. Um, we have the page category. Remember, pages do have categories. Uh, and by using a template to create a page, that page in, uh, automatically belongs to a specific category, right? Similarly, a page template can use any of the layouts that your theme uh, provides uh, via code. And so you can set a default layout. So when you create a page of this template, this layout will be used by default. You can, of course, change that if needed. And you can tag templates, uh, which is mainly used for programmatic access if needed. I'll, I'll leave these options as they are, and I will save my changes. All right, so we have our product landing page template here. With that, what I will do now is I will create a new page. So I'll go back to the pages and I'll click on the new page button. Now, what you will notice here is that we have our template and we can select our template to use as a starting point for this new page instead of needing to start with a blank template, right? So I'm going to click on the product landing page template and I'm going to click on use this template. All right, so now we have a page and our page is populated by those elements, uh, by those blocks, right? But if I click on a block, you can see which variables that block uh, exposes. And this is the way that I will then populate the content for my page, right? Uh, the benefits of uh, Webini Page Builder, right? create a page for that and instead of having this image on the right I can open the file manager and I can select another image uh, let's say we want to select this image right so this is the way we can then adjust you can see here in this case the image bleeds out slightly uh, purely because this book probably only sets the image width dimensions not the height but the cool thing is right what we can do is we can locate this block and then update the block to fix that. So let's go into the blocks. Let's find the block, right? So this is that image. And here you can see we got the width, but we don't have the height, right? So I can keep the height to auto or um, if, if it's zero percent or auto, but the width will proportionally scale the image. But in this case, I just want to make sure that the image is actually slightly smaller, uh, maybe 450. Um, so this way, I don't need to worry about the height anymore because it propor proportionally scales it. I'm going to save this. All right, so we save that. And again, because this block is used in that page template, and I created my page of that template, I should see this page, uh, this change in that block visible inside my own page. So let's go into the pages. Uh, I believe this was the page that we were doing. So let's just edit it. And let's see, there we go. So we immediately inherited that change. And now the image looks good. Um, and here, for example, we can do the same right if needed. So we've got these labels that we can change. So instead of that one, let's use enterprise license savings. Uh, let's say All right. So this way we can just go through uh, the basic uh, 
blocks and completely replace this content with our own with our own content right uh, and I can't change anything else and I need to follow this structure right so this is the structure that was defined for me by the page template that I used and if I added that page template similar to the blocks all my pages would inherit those changes that is the pages that use that template right um besides that again very similar to the blocks is hey what if because you can see here we no longer have the nav bar and we no longer have the elements bar so that means we can't add additional elements to this page the page template locks us in in a very uh, uh, fixed defined structure right but again if you allow your some of your users to have more uh, editorial rights and you allow them to break off a template you can allow them to break off a template uh, and they do that by clicking on this lock icon and it's going to ask them to unlink do they want to unlink this template again very similar to the blocks by unlinking we destroy that uh, link between this page and the original template thus we will lose the ability to inherit any future changes from that template but on the other end if we unlink it now we have those elements that we can use to insert right but actually when we unlink the template we in a way it's like we copied the, the template content into this page right now because of that template uh the temp because that template is using pre-made blocks we see those blocks here right so we now if we wanted to change the styles of the block we now need to go on one level deeper and unlink the block and only now we can go to this level right so you can see there's quite a lot of um possibility that this uh, offers and it's up to you to uh, define the rules uh, for your team for your content editors how um, how limiting you want to be with your structure how much freedom do you want to give to your content editors at which level do you want to give them the ability to have pre-made templates uh, to help them uh, get started by creating new pages but then allow them to edit those templates uh, but not allow them to edit blocks right um, or you want to allow certain uh, users to edit the blocks as well right so there's a lot of power and possibility that this structure of uh, of combination of blocks and page templates unlock and um, I hope you will explore it on, on your own a bit more and understand the, the way that works best uh, for your use case. So uh, that was it with regards to the, uh, to the page templates. Hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you on the next one.